Welcome to our new lecture, Medical Engineering. And you see that this semester I'm recording in English. So I hope that you can still follow the lecture in English language. If you have trouble with the English language, there's also a previous recording available of this entire class that is completely in German. So I will link that in the description of this video. If you want to encounter the English language and if you want to get into the field using the language of the field, that I would recommend to continue with the English version of the video. And you see that essentially the language of the engineer, it's not German, it's not English, it's not Chinese, but it's broken English. So if you listen to this class, you can hear that I speak with a kind of a German accent, but you will probably get used to that because if you go to international conferences, if you work with people in the field internationally at big tech companies, you will realize that many of them are non-natives in English. So they speak to a very good degree, of course, English, but sometimes this is, of course, broken English. And this is the reason why I'm also recording this class in English such that you can get acquainted with the language already. And you will see that you will get to know many different new words and new concepts, and you can already learn them in English. We also provide a translation help for this class. So we have a vocabulary list where you can then look up different terms in English and see the German translation. But you will realize that many of the concepts are actually new. You might not have heard about them in German either way. So you can just go ahead and learn everything in the English language. So I think this is a good preparation to get started into your studies and to see that what we are doing is not just related to things that are happening in Germany, but we are actually interested in going into an international context. The class will be more or less about different imaging technologies, the physics behind it, the math behind it, the signal processing, and in the next two videos, I want to introduce several of the modalities, show what they're good for, and demonstrate a couple of images. And we'll discuss also a bit of the different use cases where you use those modalities. So I hope you will find this lecture quite interesting. This will be accompanied by exercises at our university. So there will also be programming tasks. And I'll also give a short introduction on how to actually register for the programming exercises here in this video. So looking forward to an exciting semester with you guys. So medical engineering imaging systems. And today we have the motivation and you will see that we will are offering this class here at the pattern recognition lab. This is our website it has just been refurbished. We would be actually located on the ninth floor of the computer science tower, but actually we have another online semester. So you will barely ever see anybody there. So I can recommend that you interact with us, of course, with email and our online learning platforms. And of course, we also publish our videos and our teaching materials open source. So you can see that you can also see those videos on YouTube and other platforms. My name is Andreas Meyer, and I will be lecturing the entire class. So what are the topics and the aims of the lecture? We want, of course, to show interesting applications and, of course, present the important fundamentals and relate them to practical implementation. So in the exercises, there will be exercises in the project work. So you will implement methods from the lecture. They should deepen the understanding and you learn the foundations of medical image processing. So you will also need to actually be able to implement stuff. And this will be done in Java. And we have exercises where you're essentially developing 
ImageJ plugin. So ImageJ is an open source software package that essentially can read most medical images. And with that, you will learn how to do the image processing on the respective images. This course is also available as a course book. So this has been published with open access by Springer. So you can download the entire book if you click at this link or if you type in the URL. We'll also provide it in the description of the video. And of course, as in any textbook, if you suspect an error in the book, please write us. We paid quite a bit of attention to do as little error as possible, but of course there is sometimes errors in textbook. If you think there's something wrong, just let us know and we will also hint at problems in the book if you suspect any of them. Yeah, please follow the university code of conduct. So this is a second semester class, so you may not be acquainted with all the different procedures in the university. For example, you don't have to call in sick for lectures or exercises. Now we're recording anyway, so there is absolutely no point in that. You just look at the lectures in the sequence as you like. We try to keep the lecture videos rather short, such that it's not 90 minute lectures as you would have in in-person lectures in the lecture hall. And of course, the attendance is not mandatory. It doesn't mean that you don't have to learn what is happening in the lectures. It is, of course, an aim of this class that you understand the different techniques, but you don't have to attend the lecture. So we are offering this course book, we are offering videos, and you don't have to use all of them, but it's sufficient if you learn with one of the different approaches to get into the subject. Of course, you have to attend the exercises and the deadlines are strict. So it's not like that you can, can just let them pass or something like that. If you don't submit in time, yeah, you will not pass the module. Yeah, so this is really strict and please be on time with the submission of the exercises. And then you are responsible essentially for all of the things that could possibly go wrong. So it's also your obligation to be informed about things. We will of course hint about them. So you can see them in the online platforms. You can see them of course here in the lecture, but it's not like if you miss the deadline of the exercise, we announce them at several times. And of course, it's your responsibility to obey the deadline. So don't come blaming us. Oh, I didn't know. And I, my dog ate the exercise and I couldn't submit it or something like this. If you don't submit in time, it's your responsibility. Generally, there is no exam, no written exam, no oral exam in this class, but it will be a graded project work. And the condition to the admission to the project work is that you fulfill 50% of all the exercise points. So this means that you have to pass some of the exercises to get at least 50% of the points. Note that this doesn't mean that you just have to submit 50% of the exercises because you might have small mistakes and then you're going to get 100% of the points. So probably you will actually have to do quite a few of the exercises. Of course, if they go really well, then you can essentially stop after reaching the number of points. Yet we don't recommend to do that because the exercises are actually related to the project work and they can also help you with completing the project work. So please follow up on the exercise and please implement the things that we have prepared for you. Also, do not copy. We have automatic checks for plagiarism and we have software in place. And if you have plagiarism in your project work, 
in your exercises, this immediately leads to zero points in the exercise and a grade of 5.0, which is essentially not passed in the project work. So please don't do that. Plagiarism, copying, pasting, just don't do it. And please keep that in the back of your mind for the entire study program. If you do that, you will go to hell. So don't do it. So this is severe misconduct and we will, we will get really upset if you try to do that. And believe me, the software that we're using is really good. And we have solutions of the previous exercises and so on, and we will find you. So don't copy paste from other groups. Don't steal from them. We will find you and you will have a, a very hard time explaining why you submitted exactly the same code as a different group. So just don't do it. Please work independently. Well, there is also an evaluation for this class and the evaluation means that there is a central system set up and you get to assign points and there's free text fields and please follow the evaluation. So please then about in the towards the end of the semester you will get a link and in this link you can then submit the feedback that you want to give us. Please note that the feedback is meant to improve the class. So it won't help a lot if it's, you know, full of insults and, you know, you're anonymous and you can behave like on Facebook, on Twitter and so on. It's actually not that anonymous because the number of students in this class is rather small and still it may be like a hundred students in the class, but you know, you're part of this class. So it's not like on an anonymous account because you will be one person within this group. Of course, if you send insults and stuff like that, we won't get upset. You know, we will deal with the issues in a very professional way. And still, this is not a great way of communicating with each other. Of course, there is critique. And of course, we do things wrong. So please don't hold back with critique. But if you offer a critique, then it might also be worth to think about it and what things can actually be improved. Because if you just complain, then that's really hard to improve on the lecture. But if you go ahead and actually tell us, look, I didn't like this and this and this, and this is how I would improve it, then this is much easier to follow. And this is something that we can much easier implement. And you will see that throughout this class, we have numerous iterations. So we've been teaching this class for a very long time now, and we improve it every semester. So you see also this semester, although we are online and we all recorded it a year ago, we do new recordings because we want to have better recordings and we want to have a better class. So this is why we re-record. So of course, this evaluation is, um, of course, anonymous and it has really a high impact on the teaching. And of course, there is some impact on the lecturer. If you have a really bad evaluation, then you have to explain it to, you know, the other professors at the university. But actually, the aim of the evaluation is to improve the lecture and make a better class for future students. And if you have an issue with the class, please contact us. Please let us know. We try to improve as soon as we learn that there's a problem with the class. We try to improve on that. So in the ideal case, if you give us the feedback early, it's also you who can really improve on structured feedback and the different means of feedback. By the way, we are also hosting an anonymous forum in our learning platform such that you can also give anonymous feedback there in case that you know you are afraid that we might get really angry if we hear critique and stuff like that that's why we also offer an anonymous way of communicating with us such that you don't have to disclose your name so what are also important things well there is a password that you need to register for the class and this is done in EST and stood on, and therefore you need the password that I'm showing here on the slides. And remember, if you have any trouble with that, there is help if you send an email to mt 
hilfe at i5csfau.de. And of course, you can send requests in German. And yeah, that's no issue. Everybody in amongst the students and so on, everybody speaks German. So that's not a big deal. Let's look a bit into the structure of the class and we will walk you through different medical imaging modalities. We will talk about many modalities and I have a short summary of the modalities that you will learn about in this class. And you see that I have them listed here. And of course, we will introduce with the topic of general image and signal processing. So this is something that you need to know. You need to know what an image is. So what are things that are shown on the image? How do I process these images? How can I detect, you know, fractures? What is perfusion images? What are lesions? Can I image actually metabolism? And many, many, many other things that are visible on medical images. And you can see it already here that we have a couple of images here on the right hand side. And you see that there are 3D modalities, there's 2D modalities and all kinds of images that are being used in medicine in order to perform diagnosis. You probably have seen the CT images like on the top right where you can see the bones really well, but there's also X-ray projection imaging like on the bottom left. And there's even techniques that allow you to show metabolism like shown on the bottom right. So this is a lot of different techniques. And you see that all of these techniques, they have been developed in order to improve medical diagnosis. And you see that this is still a topic of today's research because in every step, in every new modality, we want to have better means of diagnosis. And if you find something out about a certain disease, then you want to have the ideal, the optimal means to diagnose that specific disease. And quite often, these are actually medical images. And the medical images are pretty cool because you can look into the body often even without opening them. So you see here slice images and 3D images of the body without ever having to harm the body. So you see that these are the main imaging modalities that we'll talk about. This will range from X-ray, CT, endoscopy, ultrasound, then pet spec which are functional modalities, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, optical coherence tomography. All these kind of modalities are also covered in the book. So there's actually more than what we are showing here, but we will stick only to the most important ones in this introduction presentation. So let's start with the first modality and the first modality is endoscopy. So in endoscopy, you actually have an endoscope and an endoscope is essentially a camera and this camera is mounted here on a very long stick. So you have even a stereo system here, which has two lenses that is shown here on the left hand side. And with that, you can go inside of the body and look at different things. And you see here on the right hand side, this is a part 
of the stomach. So we, here we are actually looking at the mucosa and you see that there is also uh, a bit of, of slime on the skin and we see that we are inside the body here. So this is a pretty popular technique. In terms of imaging, it's very similar to a regular camera, but it is mounted with special optics such that you can look inside the body and there's things like colonoscopy where you go inside the body with the camera and of course there's also many other endoscopic procedures that are minimally invasive where you have a small cut and then you enter the endoscope into the body. Well, what else? A very, very popular technique is x-rays. And in x-rays, you can image through the body. So you can take images that show the inside of the body. Here on the left-hand side, you see one of the oldest images. So this is actually Kulik's hand. So one of the first x-rays that was ever taken by Röntgen himself, by the way. And here you see the hand, you see the bones, you see dense material. And this dense material is absorbing high energy photons. So this is a very high energetic light. And with that, you can look through the body and image the bones. This is then generated by so-called x-ray tubes. And here on the right hand side, you see a schematic of an x-ray tube and how the x-rays are actually generated. So you need some high voltage power source with that you can then accelerate electrons and the electrons hit into the anode dish and generate x-rays on the way. And these x-rays are so strong that you can penetrate the body. So we will look in the lectures on x-rays how to actually generate the x-rays, what are the physics behind it, and how we get these very interesting images here on the left-hand side. And by the way, there is also a very interesting story about the left-hand side image. And we actually have that in the textbook. So if you want to figure out what the discussions about the image on the left-hand side is, please have a look at the textbook. You will find that this is actually quite surprising. And there are actually two images that are around and they get confused quite often. And we have the actual story in the book. Well, what else? There's also techniques that are x-ray based. And one thing that I want to show here is angiography. So in angiography, you have specialized systems that are mounted in an operation theater. So in an OR, and there you use x-rays on the table where the patient is lying during the intervention. And this is used to guide minimally invasive interventions. So here only a very small cut is made, maybe in the groin or at actually quite far distant locations of the location where you actually want to operate on. So if you have a cut down here in the groin, you can actually move up with a small wire that is called a catheter. And with the catheter, you move up all the way and you go all the way to the heart. And then you can just use these small wires in order to open coronary arteries and in order to remove blockages. You can even go up to the brain. Yeah. So there's also dedicated operation theaters, sometimes with two x-ray systems, actually, there's then a biplane system, where you then can also operate minimally invasive, just with a couple of wires on the brain, going through essentially all of the torso up into the head. And there you then can, for example, in the case of a stroke, you can remove a, a blockage that is actually preventing the blood from flowing into the brain, and this can be taken out. So this is real time imaging. So there you have to be really quick with the processing because you have to display several frames per second on the display such that you can actually see where your wires are going. And sometimes it's very hard to see the vessels. So there's a trick to visualize them. And this is called digital subtraction and geography. So here you see an regular x-ray image on the left hand side. 
And what you do in order to visualize the vessels is you inject iodine based contrast agent. Now the contrast flows in and if you look very closely in the center image, you can actually already see the vessels. But you see that the anatomical background here by the hand is so strong that you can barely see any of the vessels. But there's a very cool trick that is called the digital subtraction and geography. So you take the image in the center and then you subtract the image on the left, just taking the same x-ray parameters and subtract the two and you get the image on the right hand side. So this is called a DSA and this principle is very powerful because now on the right hand side image you can see the vessels extremely well. So this technique is actually mathematically a very simple technique but it allows you to spot differences between two images very very quickly and imagine if you had that idea and you had a patent for it, yeah, there's really patents out there for ideas as simple as that one, then you would probably not be just a very good researcher, but you could also get quite a bit of money for inventions like that one. And remember, what we are doing here is leading you towards a career in either science or industry. By the way, medical imaging, both are very closely related because, of course, industry has to keep up with the newest developments in science. So they like also to cooperate in research projects. And actually, we do that at our lab quite often. And you see that sometimes simple ideas like this one are out there and you can dramatically improve treatments, get much better guidance with a simple trick as just subtracting two images. Now this is just the first step. There's also 3D imaging modalities. This is what we'll talk about in a couple of seconds. Then you can also compute the 3D structure of the vessels and then you get images like the one I'm showing here. So here you can see that only the contrast agent is reconstructed in 3D and let's say you want to plan something, you want to have an insight on some very sophisticated vessel structure, then you can reconstruct it, you can measure metrically in that image and then you can decide where to go next with your catheter and maybe you understand why you can't take that specific corner with the wire you have on the table inserted into the patient. So this can be done in close to real time, only a couple of seconds, a 3D image and you can improve navigation again drastically. Also what's cool about those angiography systems is that they have very high resolution. So they can also get very highly resolved images, for example, for high contrast structures as the skull, as we're showing here. And of course, you can also do close-ups. And here you see the reconstruction of a stented vessel where you essentially introduce a small wire mesh and this wire mesh is then expanded inside of the vessel in order to keep a large diameter and in order to restore optimal blood flow. So this is done, for example, in stroke patients, but also in patients with coronary heart disease. So there you go into the vessel that is already narrowed and this then also leads to the problem that the heart is not properly pumping. And as soon as you widen the vessel, so what you do is you take a small balloon, you push it inside and then you blow it up inside of the vessel and then immediately the blood flow is restored and then you put in this small wire in order to keep it open. Patients that have this coronary disease, they often have trouble with, you know, they run out of breath even when they go up one flight of stairs. And so they are in a very bad condition because the heart is not pumping enough and they are running out of oxygen. So physical labor is really, really hard for them. And you do this minimally invasive. You go into the hospital, then the intervention takes maybe a couple of hours. But some patients, they report that immediately after the surgery, they feel better, much better. And so the patients that undergo this kind of therapy, they are typically very, very thankful 
because they have a very high chance of recovery and typically it's only a matter of days that they feel better and with a minimally invasive procedure you can get down to only two days in hospital imagine if you would want to operate on the heart and you want to have a, a bypass surgery or something like that where you add a small piece of, of vessel in order to replace the vessel that has been occluded that cannot transport the blood anymore there you have to open the chest you have to go to the heart and you're at least six weeks in hospital because you really have to open the torso and this is really a very exhaustive surgery minimally invasive same recovery rates but only two days or a week in hospital so that's really a dramatic improvement for the patient and also a dramatic improvement in terms of cost so imagine you are six weeks in hospital how much time and money that costs to treat the patient to care for the patient he needs food and you know service and so on and if you compare that to two days that's much much cheaper and by the difference of the cost you can also then argue why you can pay for very expensive technology like x-ray tubes in the operation theater and so on. sophisticated technology even more sophisticated technology is computed tomography and here you have scanners like this one where you actually have a x-ray detector and source mounted on a gantry and they are rotating around the patient the patient goes on the table that you can see here on the left hand side and you lay down and then you essentially are being scanned so you get transported with the table through this donut appearing shape and this is of course the scanner and the donut shape is because there is the scantry rotating inside and then you do x-ray projections from all sides and this allows you to reconstruct slice images like the one that I'm showing here on the right hand side so here you see a slice image this is a contrast filled heart you see some ribs on the top and you see the spine on the bottom there's this large black hole in the center of the image so this is actually the air tube the trachea and then of course the contrast filled heart then there is these two like half moon shaped structures that are on the left and right hand side so this is the top of the lung and you may wonder why this is a bit of a strange anatomy and what you're seeing here is actually not a human scan but this is actually a pig so this is from an animal study and in this animal study they were exploring the influence of different contrast agent and also different medications and then in this kind of animal study they were creating the image that they are showing here on the right hand side so you see that there is a multitude of different scanning devices and you've seen that we have only looked at a very small fraction of the scanning devices in this small video here we will continue in part two of this introduction where we then also will have a look at a different kinds of modalities that are of course suited for different kinds of diagnostic purposes. So thank you very much for listening to this video and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.